You are invited to Pan-African Business Expo, a historic event for the African-Caribbean business communities in the United Kingdom and abroad, promoting international trade with Africa and the Caribbean. The event will be held at King's College, London, Strand, on Thursday, 17th April 2014, from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. This year's theme is Empowering Businesses to Engage Effectively in International Trade. The Pan-African Business Expo is a platform to meet and network with government officials, diplomats, investors, professionals, entrepreneurs, and various business representatives. The Expo features workshops on various aspects and issues relating to international trade with Africa and Caribbean. Keynotes addressed by ambassadors and high commissioners from various African and Caribbean countries. Invited speakers are Prem Goyal, OBE, CEO Global Markets Consultants Limited, Leslie Bachelor, Director General of the Institute of Export, IOE, Brian Trehen, MBE, UK Trade and Investment International Advisor, Emmanuel Wilfred Jones, Entrepreneur and Founder of the Black Farmer Food Brand, Michael Parker, CBE, Strategist and Entrepreneur, John Hilaire, Executive Director of War on Want, Musvari, Her Royal Highness Betty Marconi, Multi Global Award winner, Gender Expert, Founder, Girl Child Network Worldwide, Sonia Brown, MBE, Business Communicator, Branding Strategist, Mavis Amankwa, Entrepreneur, PR Guru, Author, and Motivational Speaker, and other distinguished speakers. This is a great opportunity to come and explore business opportunities in various African and Caribbean countries. Showcase your products and services to potential clients in the United Kingdom, Africa, and the Caribbean. Network with like-minded potential business partners in UK and abroad. You will meet potential investors and learn how to access funding to start and develop your business. Exhibition stands are tailored to suit your business needs. For sponsorship, exhibition, delegate packages or bookings, visit www.panafricanbusinessexpo.com. International delegates and exhibitors should call plus 4479-3135-3737 or plus 4427-873-2165 or email sales at packers4events.com. Delegate entry fee at £60 and that includes lunch, access to all workshops and drink reception. Exhibition packages from £150. Organized by Packers Imports and Exports, Packers for Events. Sponsored and supported by... Pan-African Business Expo. Be there. Hi, my name is Edith Parker. I'm the co-founder of the Pan-African Business Expo, which is taking place on the 17th of April uh, this month at the King's College London. As you are already aware, the objective of the Pan-African Business Expo is to provide a platform where um, businesses, entrepreneurs, as well as investors and embassy trade desk can interact in order to find out more about business opportunities that exist in these countries. And today we have the pleasure of meeting the Minister, Councillor and Deputy High Commissioner for St. Vincent and Grenadines, uh, Mrs. Doris Charles. Thank you very much for having us. Thank um, you, thank you. Yeah. Um, we would like to find out more, could you Give us a bit more introduction about yourself, what you do here, what's your job role. Okay, my Embassy. name, as you say, is Dorothy. I'm Doris. I'm from the beautiful island of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. I came to this post about four years plus ago. And uh, part of my task, I should say, is in relation to promoting St. Vincent by way of... Um, um, soliciting um, <clears throat> investors, um, facilitating the whole process of investment, um, and also to, uh, with an emphasis on development of our country. Yes. So the rule generally is a facilitating one. Um, we also here at the High Commission, 
we deal with um, trade initiatives as well, yeah. and we pass information through to uh, the agencies in St. Vincent um, and the Grenadines. So that is where I fit in. Um, uh, before that, I should say, I am from the island, from the main island, that is St. Vincent. But then we also have the Grenadine Islands. Together we have about 32, 32 islands. About um, less than 10 of them are inhabited. Uh, we have close to um, 110,000 persons living on those islands. Okay. But here in the UK, where our office is located, we have um, a diaspora as well um, okay. that is vibrant Good. and yes. very caring in terms of what they are proposing to do in terms of going back to St. Vincent or providing such linkages that are necessary okay. to in a whole remit of trade, investment and development initiatives. Good. No, that's very interesting. I mean, based yes. from what you have said, yes. your key is very raw with this embassy and yes. not just the diaspora here, but the whole country as well. Absolutely. Which is very good. And I think what um, what is also interesting is to find out a bit more history about your mm. country. You. Well, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, um, the historians tell me, is that um, <clears throat> it's very special in this context in that uh, prior to 1763, when it was ceded to Britain, there were Carib Indians who aggressively presented, prevented European settlement on mainland St. Vincent. That is, um, until the 18th century, we had enslaved Africans, whether they were shipwrecked or escaped from neighboring island Barbados and uh, St. Lucia and the Grenada. They sought refuge on mainland St. Vincent, mm -hmm. and then it was known as Hiruna, mm -hmm. as it was um, called by the Caribs. Mm -hmm. uh, the Caribs later intermarried, and uh, we had what was known as the Garifuna or Black Caribs. Okay. So they intermarried with Africans, and there we had the Black Caribs. I think I am one of um, <laughs> the descendant of the Black Caribs, yes, um, and that that indeed it is. Um, so the island was um, after 1763 it was ceded to Britain. Then it was restored to French rule in 1779, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and so it was regained by the British under the Treaty of Paris in 1783 in which Great Britain officially recognized the end of the American um, Revolution. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And similar treaties were also signed with France and Spain, known as the Treaties of Versailles um, in 1783, of which um, St. Vincent was put back under the British control. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, our defiant paramount chief, Joseph Chateauier, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm there was a conflict between the British and the Black Caribs, and he led, um, how would you say, a revolt against the British mm -hmm. until, that continued until 1796, when General Sir Ralph Abercrombie crushed a revolt that was fomented by the French radical Victor Hughes. And so more than 5,000 Black Caribs were eventually deported to Rotoan, an mm -hmm. island off the coast of Honduras. Mm -hmm. And Joseph Chateau is recognized as our national hero. Um, and so from 1763 until independence, mm -hmm. St. Vincent Pass, independence was obtained in um, 1979. St. Vincent passed through various stages of colonial status under the British. Um, mm -hmm. So predominantly, that is where we are today. We are an independent nation state following a referendum in, 70, in 1979 under, under Milton Cato, mm -hmm. St. Vincent and the Grenadines became the last of the Windward Islands to gain its independence. It is important for us to give a, a historical back, backdrop to mm -hmm. where we are in terms of trade. Mm -hmm. um, it's so important to continue to encourage a level of economic partnership with Africa and what it potentially holds for a developing nation state, as well as our potential partners and investors. Our Prime Minister, Dr. Ralph Gonsalves, continue to emphasize the whole concept of partnership 
as we move towards the 21st century and beyond. In existence, there is what is called an umbrella body, the African, Caribbean, and Pacific group of states known as the ACP. I'm sure you're familiar with, yes. with that terminology. Mm -hmm. um, St. Vincent and the Grenadines belong to that grouping. And that's why this pan, um, well, pan African Expo mm -hmm. is so important to us. We gravitate towards this. We like the idea of showcasing our 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 island mm -hmm. and uh, to be part of this this initiative. Right. I must put in perspective the ACP, which is referring to, uh, well, as, as I was saying, um, our group of countries. That group was created in Georgetown by the Georgetown Agreement in 1975, and there are some major objectives, and I'm sure. Um, that are pivotal to the discussions here um, at this at this time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, sustainable development, that is key. Mm -hmm. Poverty reduction within its member states, that is key. Yeah. Greater integration within the world's economy, and that too is key. Mm -hmm. okay. Now, <clears throat> the member states of the ACP, one of them being our states, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, are signatories to what is known as the Cotonou Agreement mm -hmm. with the European Union mm -hmm. that was signed in 2000 and it was a successor to the Lomi Conven Conventions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What is critical is that um, this Lomi Convention was a trade and aid agreement between the European Community and the ACP countries. Mm -hmm. That was in 1975. And there was a first Lomi Convention that was effective in 1976. I've taken the time to go back to that point to say how far we have come. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And the objective then in 1976 was to provide a new framework of cooperation between the then European community and the developing ACP countries, especially those that were former British. Mm -hmm. Dutch, Belgian and French colonies and St. Vincent and the Grenadines fell within that. Okay. Agricultural and mineral exports could enter the EU mm -hmm. free of duty. Okay. Preferential access was based on a quota system that was agreed on such products like sugar and beef. And these products were in direct competition with European community agricultural products, of course. Mm -hmm. And the EU it committed some $3 billion for aid and investment in the ACP countries. Mm -hmm. But like anything else, there were renegotiations. Yeah. The result was a Lomi II from January 1981 to, 80, to February 1985. And there were, again, there was an increase in aid and the investment expenditure. Mm -hmm. Then there was a Lomi 3, which was effective March 1985, which dealt with trade provisions. In May 1986, aid. Mm -hmm. And that terminated in 1990. Mm -hmm. However, there was an increase in commitments to something like to the tune of $8.5 billion. Then there was Lomi 4, which was effective December 1989. Mm -hmm. Trade provisions were covered and so on for the next 10 years or so. Here came the time when the European Development Fund was channeled through the European Investment Bank, mm -hmm. which was used as a primary vehicle through which Lomi developed mm -hmm. in our country. When I was a child and as a teenager, I heard of things like the Stabek schemes and the seismic schemes mm -hmm, mm -hmm. as far as it impacted bananas okay. and through those mechanisms there was some compensatory finance to ACP states for adverse fluctuations in the world price of agricultural and mineral exports in the context of St. Vincent and the Grenadines that catered to the fluctuation in our the price of our agricultural exports mm -hmm. and so we were directly impacted mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what we must not forget is that back then in 1985 the european union had laid the groundwork for a comprehensive a sort of blueprint for welding together the fragmented national markets to create a genuinely um, as a frontier free single market by the end of 1992 mm -hmm. In 1986, the European Union adopted the Single European Act, 
And so within that construct, mm -hmm. you have what is known as the Council of Ministers that made the necessary decisions to meet the 1992 deadline. Mm -hmm. That impacted further on a small state of like St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Mm. Um, so 1993, the single market for the EU became a reality. Mm -hmm. What that meant, enormous, I, I don't, I, I think I'm sort of like over, put a, an emphasis, an enormous negative impact. It was also, it had a debilitating effect on ACP preferential access to the European Union markets. Mm -hmm. Banana farmers within our region suffered. Mm -hmm. They argued for a continuation of preferential access to the two traditional markets like the United Kingdom. There was a fear that gripped our, our farmers and it was real. The European Union would be flooded, that their fear too, was that the European Union would be flooded with cheap bananas from Central American plantations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The result, as I emphasized a while ago, is that the effect and the ultimate destruction of several Caribbean countries, St. Vincent and the Grenadines being part of that remit, was, it became a reality. Mm -hmm. And of course there were negotiations which led to the EU in 1993 agreeing to maintain a sort of Caribbean producer's preferential access until low before mm -hmm. would have come to an end. But that was pending negotiations on a possible extension. Mm -hmm. It is documented that the United States of America in 1995, in its own economic interest, petitioned the World Trade Organization to investigate whether Lome 4 was actually violating the World Trade Organization rules. And so it was settled that in 1996, the WTO dispute settlement body ruled in favor of the plaintiffs and that ended the cross subsidies that had benefited our country, part of the ACP grouping. The United States remained unsatisfied and they insisted that all preferential trade agreements mm -hmm. between the EU and ACP should cease. The WTO dispute settlement body established another panel mm -hmm. to discuss the issue and they concluded that the agreements between the EU and the ACP were indeed not compatible with World Trade Organization regulations. Mm -hmm. And so finally the EU with the US Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. through WTO reached an agreement and that changed the course of history for ACP countries, more specifically St. Vincent and the Grenadines. So ever since the US cha charged in 1999 that the EU trade preferences given to the developing nations were not in accordance with WTO regulations, mm -hmm. the economy the economies have been economies of CARICOM. Again, that's another grouping yeah. of which St. Vincent Grenadines is a part. The economies of many Caribbean community countries have been rendered incapable of competing on the world market and are tethering on the edge of bankruptcy. Mm. And I could go on and on, but the, the, the point being is that um, we lost out yeah, big time yeah, yeah, yeah. in terms of the preferential treatment mm. that we were given then. Mm. We move forward to the point of um, in May of 2001 when the EU adopted a new banana import regime corresponding to a deal similar to the one that had been struck with the US without any consultation with our Caribbean leaders. Mm. Our country is undeniable will be the most affected in the process. Mm -hmm. And the new system included a phasing out period aimed at dismantling the current quota and tariff systems that since the 1970s mm -hmm. have kept high cost banana industry alive in the Caribbean under the provisions of the Lomi Convention. Mm. Then we return now to the Cotona Agreement that I had mentioned and mm -hmm. its relevance. 
one of the major differences between the, the current Cotona Agreement and the Lomi Convention is that the partnership is extended to new actors mm -hmm. such as civil society, okay. yeah, private sector, okay. Okay. trade unions, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. local authorities. Good. And so these would be involved in consultations and planning mm -hmm. of national development strategies mm -hmm. provided with access to financial resources mm -hmm. and involved in the implementation of programs. Mm -hmm. Many small islands like St. Vincent and the Grenadines um, stand to, to grasp opportunities that are provided. Mm -hmm. um, and so our state, the state of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, continue to address the challenges that confront us. Mm -hmm. Our government under the leadership of Dr. The Honorable Ralph Gonsalves continue to stress the importance of diversifying around yeah. bananas. Mm -hmm. I'll take the time to provide that because you have asked about um, trade and yes. trade initiatives. Yeah. So I take the time to, to help you to understand, help yeah, us yeah, to understand no, no, yeah, exactly. that exactly. it is yeah. within that, that sort of, um, how do you say, within that sort of, within those parameters yeah. that St. Vincent and the Grenadines will continue to survive yes. and that we have something to offer the world. Yes. We are also known as a gem of the Antilles. Kairuna, land of the blessed. Okay. We are still a nation state within the ACP countries, within CARICOM, also within the world. And we have something to offer. Good. Good. There are areas primed for exports. Mm -hmm. So we talked about agro-processing. Yeah. We talk about creative industries. Mm -hmm. We talk about tourism. Industries for inward investment, again, we hit on tourism, mm -hmm. international financial services, mm -hmm. information and communication technology, mm -hmm. light manufacturing, and again, agro-processing. Mm -hmm. I think you had mentioned some time ago um, in terms of our trade associations, yeah, yeah. what trade associations that actually exist in St. Vincent and mm -hmm. Grenadines. Mm -hmm. After all that, it's the St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Chamber of Industry and Commerce, although it is not fully representational of all businesses, mm -hmm. it is the only organized and functioning association. Okay. Okay. You may want to know what is the attractiveness that we have to offer to yes. investors. Definitely. <laughs> and Definitely. I'm hoping that folks who are actually looking or viewing uh, that they will want to know why St. Vincent. Yeah, why St. Vincent? You know, out of give all, all of what we have Caribbean. actually exactly. discussed. Yes? Exactly, yeah. Well, I'm pleased to say that our government's commitment is to providing a favorable investment climate to all. Good. We have tax holidays and duty-free concessions. Mm -hmm. We are an English-speaking population. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that is going to appeal to yeah, a lot of people. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. We have low labor rates. Okay. We have an educated workforce. Good. We have import tax concessions on raw materials, machinery and equipment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Our investors can repatriate funds. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Foreigners may hold trust company license. There are no limitations on foreign exchange. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Our work permit requirements are lenient for qualified foreign nationals. Good. Um, you asked as well, um, what are the agencies that promote trade in St. Vincent and yeah. mm -hmm. We have the Ministry of Foreign, foreign Affairs. Mm -hmm. It has been renamed um, recently with the inclusion of, I think, information technology. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Foreign Trade, um, Commercial, Commerce, Foreign Trade, Commerce, and I think information technology. All right. We only have to go to our website, um, www.gov.vc, okay. and you'll be able to pick up additional information there. Okay. We also have Invest SVG. The chief executive director there is Mrs. Bernadette Ambrose Black. Okay. 
Okay. Of course, given the context already mentioned, there are challenges that the nation faces and continues to face as it seeks to comply with the standards set mm -hmm. by the EU. Mm -hmm. All our businesses are registered at the Commerce and Intellectual Property Office, mm -hmm. CIPO, mm -hmm. that is located in our capital, Kingstown. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For agro-processing and light manufacturing, our tax holidays are up to 15 years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's a wave of duties on the import of raw materials mm -hmm. and equipment companies. Mm -hmm. Tax exemptions on dividends paid to shareholders. Foreign investors can own 100% of their business as well. Mm. And we have income tax rebates between 25% and 50% if exports accounts for 10% or more of their sales. Now in the field of tourism, there's income tax exemptions from 10 to 15 years. Exemptions of custom duties on building materials, okay. hotel equipment and some promotional materials, mm -hmm. freedom from capital gains, taxes, exemption of import duties on food and beverages mm -hmm. for resorts with more than 100 years. Mm -hmm. um, and I remember that um, I was questioned about this, that St. Vincent and the Grenadines have what is known as the Captain Bly Exo. Okay. Which was a judge, the world's best rum oh. and the World Drinks Drinks Award. Okay. Philippa Graves is the marketing manager of St. Vincent Distillers Limited. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And um, what she was saying is that they have had other successes in the past, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. this latest tribute is the biggest by far. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. She said that the rum won the Gold Award at the 2001 Rum Fest okay. in 2002 first place at the International Rum Festival mm -hmm. and in 2009 the International Spirits Competition also known as the SIPS Awards and it won a goal then mm -hmm. and she is very thankful for this. Uh, it's a rum that is made by Vincentians. Mm -hmm. The distillery is Vincentian owned mm -hmm. and the majority of the staff has been in the rum making process in excess of 16 years. Okay. I want to also say that um, Captain Bly in the 1700s would have brought um, the breadfruit plant to St. Vincent. Mm. And so in the Botanic Gardens, which is the oldest in the Western Hemisphere, mm -hmm. again around the 1700s, um, <clears throat> the breadfruit plant survived onto this day. And that is part, or I should say it is, the breadfruit and the jackfish that's our national dish, okay. Okay. Um, and um, you can challenge me to this, but mm. I think I make a very good breadfruit. Is um, it? Yes, <laughs> a very good roast breadfruit. Yes. Okay. So, I, I yes. did try it actually you when did. I traveled to Jamaica. Okay. And before no, you see, well, Vincentian breadfruit is, is the different? best in the world. All right, <laughs> <laughs> take your word for it. I can't yes. wait to visit St. Yes, Vincent. Yes. Yeah. And then we have some special areas of interest too, and that is um, the Nature Falls of Berlin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, we also have um, we have what is known as the Vermont Nature Trail, where having completed the trail or near completion, mm -hmm. and I've done it myself over 20 years ago, you can see um, the Amazona gildingi, which is mm. a rare species of, um, of um, the parrot um, that is specific to St. Vincent. And mm. really, there's no other um, bird like that or parrot like mm. that, I should say, in the world. Amazona gildingi, that's a Vincentian mm. parrot. Um, and so we have our botanical gardens and we are the same as well. Come to St. Vincent and the Indians and experience um, some sun, some sea, some fun. <laughs> I shouldn't say some sea, <laughs> the sea. Exactly. Yes. Um, no, I mean, um, I've looked on the internet. Yes. Beautiful pictures. Yes. Some yes. of the places where you just look at and say, I want to visit this country. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. And, and it seems there's so much to offer as well. It does. Business-wise. Yes. Tourism work. Yes. And I'm just looking at those products there. I want those products. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. We have some products from St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Yeah. One of them being a green seasoning that is manufactured on the, the Windfresh label. Okay. 
-hmm. Now, where the bananas, where we had WINFA, that is Windward Island Farmers Association, that was um, uh, trading for our farmers would normally trade through that um, onto the world market. We mm -hmm. have replacing that, we have WINFRESH, and that WINFRESH has actually taken up the production of um, agricultural products within the region. Mm -hmm. So in St. Vincent and Grenadines, we have Vinci Fresh, which comes under WINFRESH um, mm -hmm. as one of its subsidiaries. And here, this is one of the products, the green seasoning. It is okay. the best in the world. <laughs> I have tried it. I have tried it. It's the best in the world. Um, oh, we also have um, Erica good. Country Style. Again, this is one of our products, okay. um, our products. We also have um, Mountain Top Natural Spring Water. Okay. Yes, this is also another product that is um, produced in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, mottled water. Um, so these are just a few um, okay. samples. And again, we repackage rice, as I was saying. This is just one of our products as well. Okay. But don't take my word for it. Come to see in Vincent and the Grenadines, the gem of the Antilles. Hiruna, the best place there is. Um, the best place there is. And I believe that's one of the areas where I guess investors, particularly those in the manufacturing industry, Absolutely. could start looking at uh, St. Vincent and Grenadine as Absolutely. a target. That's correct. Yeah. Um, some years ago, there was um, an initiative. Um, someone came and was asking about um, pineapples mm -hmm. and whether or not um, we are also exploring that in terms of canning pineapples mm -hmm. and some of our seasonal fruits like mangoes, guavas, um, um, golden apples, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. We, we call them golden apples, but I think they're known as June apples. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, yeah, so uh, again, we are looking at that. Um, the Ministry of Agriculture has within it a unit that is specific to industries, and the focus again is actually on small industries where, where these products are concerned. But that is where we are. We are inviting investors to come on board and uh, um, to be part of this initiative. And as was explained before, it is also, we're hoping for partnerships. Yes, yes, yes. which is very important. Yes, yes. And, um, yeah. we are geared towards that. Good. The project, mm -hmm. um, you would have some setbacks, but we are on target again. Mm -hmm. um, and this year, we have been told um, by our government that the international airport will be opened. Okay. okay. So some folks would say, well, we haven't seen much in terms of progress, and others would say, yes, there is progress. Mm -hmm. I have seen with my own eyes, having visited, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. that there is tremendous pro progress that has been made. And as you said, if you check our website, Yes, there's regular actually, updates. Yes, you can actually regular follow updates, what's yes. happening to the And airport, we are hoping... Yeah. That. And this um, this initiative by the Pan Caribbean the Business Pan African Pan, Business sorry, Expo, Pan yeah. um, African Business Expo has come at an opportune time where not only are we showcasing our country but we are also saying that St Vincent and the Grenadines is at a stage of takeoff with the coming on stream of the international airport as dr rudy matthias mm -hmm. would let you know he's a chairman of the iadc he would let us know that uh, this initiative is probably one of the biggest and best that has ever come to our country yeah. and we are hoping that um, employment we're going to have more yes, much more in terms of increasing point. employment as well as the gateway to the rest of the world for yeah. us to attract international partners, investors, and the visitors alike from the Caribbean region and the rest, the of, the rest world. of the world. So again, come to St. Vincent. Yeah. Oh, really <laughs> that's the best, place, the best place there is. The best thank, place there is. Yeah, that's good. Yes. No, thank you very much yes. for that. Yeah, um, I mean, yes. as Mrs. Charles have just highlighted, highlighted, if you go to the website of St. Vincent and Grenadine, it's all the updates you need to know about this airport and it's just amazing you can't miss it you are invited to pan-african business expo a historic event for the african caribbean business communities in the united kingdom and abroad 
promoting international trade with Africa and the Caribbean. The event will be held at King's College, London, Strand, on Thursday, 17th April 2014, from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. This year's theme is Empowering Businesses to Engage Effectively in International Trade. The Pan-African Business Expo is a platform to meet and network with government officials, diplomats, investors, professionals, entrepreneurs, and various business representatives. The Expo features workshops on various aspects and issues relating to international trade with Africa and Caribbean. Keynotes addressed by ambassadors and high commissioners from various African and Caribbean countries. Invited speakers are Prem Goyal, OBE, CEO Global Markets Consultants Limited, Leslie Bachelor, Director General of the Institute of Export, IOE, Brian Trehen, MBE, UK Trade and Investment International Advisor, Emmanuel Wilfred Jones, Entrepreneur and Founder of the Black Farmer Food Brand, Michael Parker, CBE, Strategist and Entrepreneur, John Hilaire, Executive Director of War on Want, Musvari, Her Royal Highness Betty Marconi, Multi-Global Award winner, Gender Expert, Founder, Girl Child Network Worldwide, Sonia Brown, MBE, Business Communicator, Branding Strategist, Mavis Amankwa, Entrepreneur, PR Guru, Author and Motivational Speaker, and other distinguished speakers. This is a great opportunity to come and explore business opportunities in various African and Caribbean countries. Showcase your products and services to potential clients in the United Kingdom, Africa and the Caribbean. Network with like-minded potential business partners in UK and abroad. You will meet potential investors and learn how to access funding to start and develop your business. Exhibition stands are tailored to suit your business needs. For sponsorship, exhibition, delegate packages or bookings, visit www.panafricanbusinessexpo.com. International delegates and exhibitors should call plus 447931353737 or plus 442078732165 or email sales at packers4events.com. Delegate entry fee at £60 and that includes lunch, access to all workshops and drink reception. Exhibition packages from £150. Organized by Packers Imports and Exports, Packers for Events. Sponsored and supported by... Pan-African Business Expo. Be there.